Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review and a quick comparison and a little test of the Harbor Freight laminated steel padlocks. These are sold for $10 for a three pack and they have unbelievable reviews on Harbor Freight's site. All the comments of heavy duty and secure lock uh, just, just isn't the case. I think generally a lot of the comments are maybe from people who just uh, think that most locks are all created equal, which is just a complete falsity. Anyway, this lock individually is about $3.50. It's a four pin lock. They have a little rubber boot on it to help uh, prevent it from scuffing up things if you have it on a trailer. And it's an eight rivet design. So this would be a, essentially the knockoff of what has been the traditional master laminated steel padlock. Most people don't know, but the master invented these in 1921, almost a hundred years ago. And the deal with these laminated steel padlocks was not the most extreme security. They just offered a lot more improved security versus what else was out there as far as physical durability. And was back in be prior to World War II, it was much cheaper to stamp out, and even now, uh, sheets of st st uh, sheet metal versus uh, putting in the effort to mill out a solid block of steel. And so that was the deal, is that the riveted laminated locks were just provided a compromise of both physical durability as well as manufacturing costs. This Harbor Freight takes that to, unfortunately, the next lower level. Now, one nice thing, and I will recommend anybody when you're doing keyed locks, is try to look through the packages so that you can find uh, at least keys that have stronger, that have a wide variation. That's going to give you a little more pick resistance. There is no security pins or anything, so these can easily be picked with uh, almost no consequence. I'm not a lock picker, but there's certainly plenty of people on YouTube who are, like Bosnian Bill. So one of my first uh, complaints, I mean, it works pretty well. Uh, it's smooth. There's actually surprisingly good tolerances between the shackle and the top piece. This can be shimmed and what with soda cans or any kind of sheet metal that is just enough to slip in there with a triangular piece. And the reason that can happen is because these locking dogs are just spring-loaded pieces of metal that sit in that notch. And the spring, surprisingly enough on these, let me get something different down in there, is actually really soft. You can just see how easy I'm, well... You can't really see there. Let me get a flashlight. Jeez. There we go. It's really just holding out with my chin. Super soft. So that's what's surprising. And there's something about locks. Uh, they can be with the right tension like old school master locks. Uh, if people hit the side of them with the hammer with a little bit of tension, you'll accelerate the lock body and shake around those little cams, and they can be shaken open. It's known as wrapping, and so they are susceptible to that. I can tell you I hit one of the rivets with a file, and so they are pretty soft. I was actually trying that wrapping test with a nylon hammer, and all the laminations of this lock, the whole lock and its laminations started shifting op over to the point where the shackle wouldn't open, and I actually had to hit this against a block of metal to straighten them out. And so I have to say that, you know, all it had 91% reviews, and I just don't understand why. Because, you know, it's as easily pickable as a master lock, but a fraction of the physical durability. Just get a master lock if you want a cheap laminated padlock. Um, so anyway, I generally don't recommend this lock, even though you get three of them all keyed the same and uh, six keys. Uh, maybe if you're just, you know, locking up your fence gate to prevent people from stealing your bottles and cans or something like that, that's about what this is useful for. It's n I wouldn't use this for anything significant, such as your bicycle or locking up a trailer or anything like that. And not just the pick resist resistance, but since it can be just commonly shimmed and, you know, hammered open and it's so physically weak, and I'll demonstrate that in just a second here. I can't with any good conscience actually recommend somebody get a lock that's going to provide so little protection for, to whatever they're locking up unless they specifically want just a super cheap lock that really is, you know, you know, provides honesty access control. But if you ever lose a key, you don't have to worry about doing anything uh, too severe to break it open, even though they do say it has a hardened shackle. And a lot of times they that is true. We can see its relative hardness. We'll just take a triangular file. This is a nice American-made craftsman, so we are using a quality file. And it does skate off the chrome, but it, come on camera, 
But it is a hardened shackle, definitely is. If we compare that to, say, a premium, this is an American padlock shackle. Wow. It's hard, but it's nowhere near as hard as this. I pressed easily as hard on this thing. Not even close. That's actually surprising. This is hard, but that American is really hard. But once again, it's a $3 lock versus a $12 lock. The other thing that was disappointing is they could have got rid of that shimming issue after a long time, what Master Lock has done. Let me get my... And they could have learned that lesson. That would have been any extra manufacturing cost. As you can see, what they've done here is they've put two little notches on each side. So if somebody tries to slide a piece of sheet metal in there, it'll just caught, get caught in that notch. So that's what gives them shim protection. And they could have easily done this on the Harbor Freight too, but instead they just made it go all the way across. Anyway, in just a second here, I have a chain up on a vise, and we're just going to see if it can just withstand a basic test of hitting it a couple, three times with a regular old framing hammer. Not a big, heavy-duty hammer, just a 16-ounce hammer. Okay, I got my big sombre vise. Since this is a 5 16 shackle lock, we'll go ahead and use a 5 16 diameter chain. This is a grade 7 chain. One thing I'll also mention is a lot of people lock things up with chains, but they don't realize that... Chains have grades just like bolts, and if you use a grade 4 or 3 chain, it will be super easy to hacksaw through or cut with bolt cutters. So at least get a grade 7 known as tie-down chain, or even better, get lifting rated chain, which is always grade 8. So we'll just go ahead and lock this up. Get that around. So just like I have a bike or something else locked up, I'm not too worried about the vice. So let's just see if this can take a... I'm just going to start off with the first hit would just be like I'm driving a framing nail using my old trusty S-Wing here. The second hit will be is if I'm driving a framing nail through old dry lumber. So a lot more force. And if it survives that, then I'll give it one really hard two-handed lick like I'm quite frustrated. So it has a little bit of loose. This is maybe not the fairest test because this chain is a little tighter than it would be, say on a fence or a bicycle but it's you know the best I can do right here so let's just see if those little brass locking paws will take a framing hammer test all right we'll just do it a couple more times here let's see if it still works so there was a YouTube video by lockpicking lawyer we showed two wrenches could pry this apart and I'm sure that is possible here, but generally speaking, if somebody's going to hit it, I hit it hard enough to do that with the uh, hammer, so it wasn't like a fake hit. I didn't get the best angle on it, but generally speaking, somebody just has a hammer or a rock, they're going to have to hit it and make some noise, so it isn't, you know, ridiculously weak like pretend, and it did still operate. I think you can see the lamination shifted open over a little bit. Let me demonstrate that a little bit right here. When I was trying to do the wrapping test, I was just doing this. Whoop, I wasn't even in frame there. I was just doing this, trying to get the thing to pop open. Sometimes you gotta, and this is what was happening to the lock. So that just shows how weak the rivets are, and maybe it might even be easier. You can see how that shackle's all cantered over. And so that was my biggest issue. As you can tell the rivets, oh, actually still opens. Uh, just aren't that tough. So and it's what you expect for a three dollar lock. I've just tried this on master locks and beat them on beat them hard and never had the laminations shift over quite like it has on this lock. Give me a second, I'm gonna straighten these out and I might as well do the two wrench test on this too. Just a second. And might as well do those stupid two wrench I shouldn't call them stupid, but those two wrench test videos. And you know the most recent video that the lock picking lawyer did of breaking this lock. Uh, he didn't do very much detail, but one thing about the going sideways versus going vertically on the locks is you can use much larger wrenches when you're going vertically than when you're going sideways, and that's something they do fail to mention. But I'm sure even a laminated lock like this, if I could keep this, have any luck at keeping it in frame, will probably withstand me pressing on, this is, trying to shear out the side of the lock body. And you can just feel it's super rigid. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to try to blow out the side of a lock body unless it's an aluminum lock. And even aluminum locks 
can take, God, I can't keep myself in frame at all. Not using this method anyway. It's just obvious. I'm not even going to try to put too much force on that. But this time, I'm going to use this. Much larger wrenches. A 30 and a 29 millimeter. A shimming wrench. And then a prying wrench. I'm sure this thing will just pop open without problem. Oh, yeah. Well, not quite enough travel. There we go. The wrenches are so close together here. There we go. Well, almost. We need just a little bit more reach in there. So even I was able to do that two wrench method. And you can see, here we go. You can see how, wow, that's actually too intense. That should be about right. It just cut a little half moon out of that brass locking dog. That should not have happened. Really, that should not have happened. And if they're cutting out the plate steel, I mean, they use the brass because the one issue with master locks is when they get older and corroded, they won't open up at all with the key. They're totally unpickable when they're corroded because nothing will move and those little sliding dogs just get rusted in there. So that was uh, some forethought. They decided to put brass in there so that at least you could open it once it got corroded, and I'll give them that. But it made it incredibly weak, actually. Here are the little pieces of brass that I cut out of the locking dogs. So that's the, really the biggest issue that I see with this, is besides being really pickable, somebody who's ripped off a couple of wrenches can see one of these locks or anybody knows and just put a couple wrenches in there and with a minimal amount of effort just pop this lock open. So anyway, I can't really recommend that. At least get a master lock number five. It's gonna take a lot more force using that two wrench method on a master number five, a two inch lock than it ever, than this thing could ever, you know, hope to achieve. And you know what? Just give me a second here. I'm going to chisel off the uh, rivets on this and then uh, so we can see what's inside. All right, back in the saddle again. So uh, chiseling these little rivets off, they were, you know, for a $3 lock, I think they were fine. You actually had to use some real effort. Somebody's going to be, it's not going to be something that you can do, quote unquote, in the wild. When this thing is hanging off a chain, you're not chiseling off the rivets and you're not driving a chisel between the plates. I'll also give them that. To tell you the truth, really, after taking this apart, if they had security pins in the in the pit tumbler and you steal locking dogs, it would be actually a well worth it lock for three dollars. But the brass lugs are just a, an Achilles heel. So this is how it works inside: is those little brass lugs. Here we are. So the little brass lugs just have two little tines on them. That of course this little wing here on the locking bar just twists in between to open it up. What's kind of interesting is they put on some of the uh laminations and then they kind of swaged out the lock shackle so that's what prevents it from uh falling out when you have it open it's always kind of neat getting inside these laminated locks just because you can see it's kind of the they're cheap to manufacture but they require a bit of design work to keep track of all these different uh layers and the way they have to be stamped the layers are a pretty hard steel i have to admit that if you know it's a real weak steel if something with that's cut out this badly you can really bend easily but i actually can't let me uh No, the plates are definitely hard. That's surprisingly hard just for how cheap a lock it is. So here's the internals, and we can pop all these plates off like coins. And we'll see what we got inside here. A bunch of plates surrounding the lock body. There's only one little layer that holds in the lock body, this outer layer. And that got crushed up. Oh, wow. If that's true... You gotta be joking me. I think the external, I used to give, I mean, I give Master Lock crap for having zinc. I think this is a plastic Bible. I think you could actually get into this lock with a pocket lighter. I'll pull this clip off and look inside, but I wanted to see if this is actually a plastic body on the lock. It is. Holy smokes, guys. There is a plastic, is what's holding together the lock mechanism. So besides the brass thing, they put all this effort to actually having hardened steel plates, and you're going to use a plastic? Holy smokes, this may be a thermal set plastic, but those even high temperature plastics, uh, it's crazy because you can just that will you can just melt and soften that. 
So there's the ultimate verdict of those Harbor Freight locks, that they have a plastic uh, lock mechanism, and uh, that's just ridiculous. So besides using two wrenches, now you, everybody who buys these will know that they have plastic, literally critical components of the lock, i.e. what holds the pins that drive into the tumbler to prevent it from turning is made of plastic. And to show you how little heat that would take, I'm just going to hold the lighter. This is just a basic Bic lighter, just for a couple of seconds against the side of that plastic. It's already softening up. Hold it right there. There it's melting. It's about to catch on fire. Yeah, look at that, guys plastic if this camera would stay focused ooh that's a terrible smell glad I didn't do that for very long okay I'm gonna see what's inside just to show the lack of security pins and we'll be done and a, the little steel actuator arm is actually steel that's an improvement many master locks this little actuator arm is cast zinc and I'm not gonna keep this track of this oh I have to split this open because I don't oh I do have a key where are my keys it doesn't make any sense that they use plastic like that in this lock. It just, um, maybe it's just they assume nobody will know about it. We're just, I don't care about the pinning. I'm not a lock pick guy. I'm just wanting to see if there's anything noteworthy inside this lock. And a brass tumbler. I mean, I'll tell you what. Those are some micro, you know, the plastic won't rust, but that's just crazy. And as we can see, oh, that's weird. We can actually see here that they have kind of wannabe. Oh, that's interesting. They're steel. Okay. See, this is full of nonsensical stuff. Those upper pins, these are known as the driver pins. As you can see, they're sticking to that. So they are some kind of brass plated steel. And you can see that they've attempted to make them look like spools where they have a stamping where they're a little bit wider on each end. So. That's really weird. The lock mechanism actually has some drill resistance because it's using steel pins, yet a plastic body. It's just crazy. Uh, just who knows how that kind of design error. Anyway, uh, a couple of different modifications of this lock, steel locking dogs, and at least a brass uh, cylinder, and this lock would be a lot better. But with a plastic cylinder, that's just crazy. Um, a pocket lighter in a couple of minutes, a couple three minutes, will get that whole bottom part of the lock hot enough because the brass cylinder will just transfer the heat into this until it melts and then you're just able to turn it with the screwdriver. So at least I was able to do something productive in this video. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, and I will be continuing with my general lock evaluations. Once again, at the end of this video, I will mention that power tools will defeat any lock, even whatever you have, unless it's a $1,000 Sergeant Greenleaf. And this $12 Harbor Freight bicycle lock, which has some cast zinc internals, but it would require a lot of time with a plumbing torch to melt open. Their $12 bicycle little mini U-lock is still by far the best Harbor Freight lock. That's the only one I would buy, not any of these others. But this one for $12, way exponentially better security than a lock like this that has critical parts of the system made out of plastic. Thanks for watching. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.